Big Ten Media Days officially in the books. Camp starts next Wednesday, as I alluded to earlier this week. And I've had a chance to review the tape, the footage from Kirk Ferentz's availability across the board this week. He spoke to a couple of different national outlets and spoke for about an hour to the local media. What are the final takeaways we have from Big Ten Media Days? We'll talk about it in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you, if you're not subscribed, please do that. Please hit that thumbs up button. It does help. And give us a sub over on Instagram and Facebook, or I should say a follow. We're trying to get both of these accounts up to 1,000 followers by the start of the season. Please help the cause. Of course, we've got a large presence here on YouTube. If just about 10% of those who are subscribed here on YouTube went over to our other social media platforms and followed, we'd easily hit that goal and then some. Visit From the Hawkeye of the Storm on Facebook and at From the Hawkeye on Instagram. You can also follow me at From the Hawkeye on X. That's Twitter. Again, From the Hawkeye of the Storm on all the major social media platforms. So, Big Ten Media Days officially in our rear view mirror. Can you believe it? Just a few days from now, it'll be August. And yes, there is football in August. Somebody tweeted this out the other night that this Thursday would be last night, was the last Thursday until next February, where we don't have any football. So, of course, that includes NFL preseason, etc. But it is pretty incredible when you think about it. Now, I had published a video a couple of days ago after Kirk Ferentz spoke at the podium. It was televised live on Big Ten Network, but it was about a 10 to 15 minute um, overall general look at the 2024 version of the Iowa Hawkeyes. But he went on to speak candidly about a number of subjects. I talked a little bit about the depth chart that was released through communications uh, yesterday. But what are our overall takeaways after looking at all the footage of Kirk Ferentz, all the interviews that I could dig up? Of course, I was not there in Lucas Oil Stadium, but I was able to compile a nice list of notes that uh, kind of summed up the week, at least from my vantage point. We'll start with what Kirk said to some of the national media. He spoke to Big Ten Network on their set. He spoke to CBS Sports Network on their set. A couple of things stood out. He continued to talk about this offensive line. We've talked about the claims that this O-line has been youthful over the last three seasons, and in some regards it has been at times, although last year they were pretty old. This year they are veteran, veteran, veteran. Kirk Ferentz is putting his chips in on this offensive line. He has stated several times, stated several times this week alone to different media outlets that he believes there's a chance they have seven starting caliber offensive linemen. And if that's the case, they should be well equipped even to withstand injury up front. But of course, fall camp will be important for those guys as well. But a lot of experience up front. He also brought up how he has confidence in improved quarterback play, although much of the blame Kirk Ferentz has placed over the last three years has been on that offensive line and lack of maturation there, he's oftentimes defended guys like Spencer Petrus and even a little bit of Deacon Hill, but mostly Spencer. It seemed like he really had this attachment to Spencer Petrus and this need to defend Spencer against what was poor quarterback play more often than not. Whether you want to admit it or not, yes, the offensive line was not good throughout much of Spencer Petrus' career, but hey, go back to 2020. Offensive line was pretty darn good. Spencer Petrus was not good. But he does believe, Kirk believes, there will be better quarterback play. And I think part of that statement goes back to depth. They have Brennan Sullivan, and they have a healthy Cade McNamara. Now, he was asked specifics on CBS Sports Network. He was asked specifics about what will look different from an X's and O's standpoint with this new offense. He deferred to fall camp and basically said, hey, we've got weeks of work ahead of us. Let's wait and see what transpires at fall camp, and then we'll get a better answer to that question. He did refer to the offense as a West Coast offense. It is the Shanahan system that seems to be getting embraced by Iowa. He mentioned a couple of different times the increase in verbiage and how uncomfortable that was for Kirk Ferentz as he acclimated himself with this new system earlier this year. And he did bring up something I think is worth noting, the new helmet communication that can be had between the quarterback 
and those on the sidelines, that is going to help Iowa. Kirk Ferentz really believes it's good for the game, and it will help Iowa since they're transitioning to this new offense, being able to have that direct line of communication um, from the quarterback to the sidelines will certainly help. One thing that I thought was interesting, he said to CBS Sports, he referred to a young guy in the quarterback room who's now in his third year. I have to think he's thinking of Marco Linez, but Marco Linez is going into his second year. This is his second season at Iowa. Maybe he was talking about Jackson Stratton, but he talked about potentially that guy taking a big step forward. So that would be a good thing, but I, I thought it was interesting he referred to what we think to be Linez as going into his third year when he's actually going into his second year. Now, Kirk also talked about the challenge for the defense of not getting complacent. He obviously has a lot of trust in Phil Parker, but they return a lot of production, so complacency has to be the biggest concern. I think that's an easy out. I don't think this team's going to get complacent. I certainly don't think a Phil Parker coached unit or a Kirk Ferentz coached team is in much danger of getting complacent, maybe individuals, but hey, good competition at a number of those spots, including linebacker, which is a strength of this team. You know, I mentioned the uncomfortable feelings that Kirk Ferentz expressed regarding the initiation and the learning of the new offense. He also said it was invigorating. So that's good to hear from a guy in his 60s, a coach in his 60s, that a lot of people kind of feel like is afraid of change. Yes, it was uncomfortable for him. Change is uncomfortable at times but he also described it as invigorating. He also talked about really good competition at cornerback. People have been concerned about depth there. They lost Cooper DeGene. John Nestor, the Chicago native, listed as the other starting cornerback on the pre-camp depth chart, opposite of Jamari Harris, who's another Chicago native. But uh, Kirk acted like he's got good confidence in the competition they'll have there with Deshaun Lee, with Devin Hilson, go down the list. So that's a positive. I would think that the cornerback spot is the thinnest across the board, but maybe not the case. Maybe it is that defensive line. Um, they are not at seven to eight guys yet. That's what one thing Kirk did bring up about that defensive line when he was asked. They have had that luxury in recent years. Can they get there this fall camp? We'll have to wait and see. Like 12 guys were listed, something close to 12 guys listed on the defensive line on that pre-camp depth chart. But Kirk made that clear. They're not at that point. They're not anywhere close to that point. Can they get to seven or eight? Maybe that would be a great uh, step in the right direction for Kelvin Bell and company. He was extremely complimentary of Jay Higgins. We understand why. Great leader. Just put up ridiculous numbers last year. Hey, Nick Jackson, guy plays alongside Jay, has an opportunity with a big year to break the all-time career uh, record for number of tackles. That's impressive. He was asked, Kirk was asked about John Budmeyer, how he's fit into the new role as wide receivers coach. He mentioned John did some coaching of the wideouts at Colorado State, something I was not aware of. And he had described Budmeyer as doing, quote, fine at that new position. Very positive about tight ends as well. No surprise there. Really likes Addison Estringa and the tandem that they can have with Estringa and with Lachey. Had nothing but good things to say about Justin Jacobs. I thought it was interesting the media, I'm assuming somebody from the Ducks media, asked Kirk Ferentz about the former Iowa linebacker and nothing but good things to say about Justin. So some people thought or presumed when Jacobs left for Oregon that it was all about money and that it was a disloyal act and whatnot. But if that's the case, he has certainly not allowed pride to get in the way of how he portrays his feelings to the media. He said nothing but good things about Justin Jacobs. He did confirm that Caleb Brown, Iowa receiver Caleb Brown, will be out one game as expected due to his recent OWI. He believes we're going to be done with it. It won't have any reason to be brought up after serving, after Caleb Brown serves that one game suspension and did endorse how Caleb has responded um, to that mistake. He was asked about Friday games late in the year. They get UCLA relatively late and they get Nebraska really late. Kirk actually said he doesn't mind the Friday games late in the season. He actually would prefer that. They're probably not going to be going full contact as much late in the year anyways when you're trying to preserve health and snaps and whatnot. So that thought that was interesting given the fact that Iowa has two Friday games this year. And he actually described it as a positive. And somebody brought this up to me on YouTube uh, a day or two ago, and I caught it as well. When Kirk was talking about Brendan Sullivan, he mentioned something about potentially having a package together 
for Brendan Sullivan. I thought that was interesting because we've been begging, Iowa fans have been begging for multiple quarterbacks to be used in places over the last three to four years. Kirk has chosen not to do that. You wonder if Tim Lester's influence might change things. And if they have a package in for a guy like Brendan Sullivan, assuming Cade's the starter, why not get a package in for Marco Linez? Perhaps that will happen given Marco's ability to run the football. So those are really my overall takeaways. Um, I guess one final note, Tom Caker to HawkeyeReport.com confirmed with Kirk Ferentz specifically the news that I had reported, we had reported here a week ago regarding Iowa linebacker Aiden Hall. Aiden Hall no longer with the team. What is the future for Aiden Hall? Is it with football at all? I'm not at liberty to speculate on that, but uh, Kirk did confirm to the media. Aiden Hall informed the team recently that he is uh, no longer on the roster. And hey, I guess one final note, with the exception of being Cohen Entringer, who's coming off a surgery, no major injuries to report, and that's positive. Now, Entringer is not projected to be a starter. He should be a factor, a big-time factor on special teams, and if uh, injuries occur in that defensive backfield, he certainly could play. It sounds like he's got a chance to be healthy for the start of the season, but no major injuries. we got all fall camp ahead of us. But those are all positive things. So just wanted to run through my notes, my overall takeaways from Big Ten Media Days for Iowa. And yes, camp starts this coming Wednesday in Iowa City. Of course, Media Day, Iowa Media Day coming up in just a couple of weeks. We'll have coverage there, coverage after Kids Day, all that coming up right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. We'll talk to you soon.